this whole idea of making your mess ups matter is really a mindset thing. It's like, okay, I've messed up. Let me let me choose what I'm going to do with this. And the thing that I think we see most often is I messed up. It's okay. I'll do better next time. And we move on. Or worse, I messed up. It's not okay. I suck and I'm never going to get it. Hey, Adam, you're looking good. I like that shirt. <laughs> and we didn't even call each other to plan this. We didn't. There were no memos sent, <laughs> no texts. <laughs> it's a great color for this fine day in June. Um, all right, let's get to it. Today, we are going to talk about making your mess ups matter. Are you ready? I'm ready. I like it. This is an important topic. It really is. And I think... What's important to know is like, this is one of those things that they do that sets them apart, right? And them being like people we perceive as successful or making progress or, you know, however you want to say it. And, and so they make the most of their mess ups, right? I tell clients all the time, listen, if you're going to mess it up, mess it up. Let's see what we get for it. Every bump matters. It counts and we need them. We need them so we can learn from them. So I really, you know, I want us to break this down. I love this. I want to give it a personal example. So I think you know this, Adam. I teach Les Mills classes. I have a couple that I teach. And every quarter, they send us new classes to learn, right? And it's like, here's a bunch of choreography. Here's a bunch of music. Here's all this stuff for you to learn and take on and then go out there and teach people. And like one of the, the ways that I torture myself <laughs> is I will listen to the music, I will watch the classes and do the class along with the instructors. And then I put myself on the line and I go out there and I teach. I just like commit, I pick a day that I'm gonna teach that new stuff to my class and I get ready to mess it up. And it, you know, doing that in front of people, I talk about sweat, right? But the benefit is I know right away what I still have yet to learn. I know when I leave that class, okay, these certain things are not learned yet and I just need to go home and work on it. So one of the best ways to learn anything is to mess it up. Totally. Do you agree with me? I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's like the old, you know, there's no such thing as mistakes. It's just learning opportunities. And it reminds me of stand-up comedy and stand-up comedians. You know, they're before they're you know selling out you know Madison Square Garden or a big arena, they're always practicing in smaller clubs, and they're seeing what resonates with the audience. They're seeing what gets laughs, what doesn't, and they're constantly refining. But they're falling flat on their face many times in those small you know venues, so, so that when they're on the big stage, they don't have those and. For you, I, I mean, you're doing it in front of the class. There is no smaller, smaller class. Um, like, it's really hard. But the idea is that, you know, they're making mistakes, they're testing what works, they're testing what doesn't work, and they're using that feedback to improve. Here's what worked, here's what landed, here's what didn't. How can we improve? How can we tighten this joke up or whatever? Yeah. Um, also, just a plug for stand up comedians, dude, that is rough. I've watched some like documentaries about some of my favorite stand-up comedians. Whoo, that is some like harrowing work. <laughs> so anyway, that was just my brief uh, aside to that. You know, for as long as I've known you, for as long as I've worked for you, and for as long as I've done this job, right? It is so evident that the thing that gets in our way most is this, right? It's what you always say. And it is our head, right? And so this whole idea of making your mess ups matter is really a mindset thing. It's like, okay, I've messed up. Let me let me choose what I'm going to do with this. And the thing that I think we see most often is I messed up. It's okay. I'll do better next time. And we move on. Or worse, I messed up. It's not okay. I suck. And I'm never going to get it. Do you see any other things commonly? Yes. Or I messed up. Here I go again. I'm never going to figure this out. Why bother? Mm. 
the quitter. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like messing up and moving on is wonderful. We ideally want to have a short term memory. The difference between, you know, many amateur and professional athletes is is between here, right? It's not that they don't have the skill level. It's not that they don't have the ability. It's it's their mindset. It's their makeup. And what happens is a lot of times people let the mistakes get to them. But it's not just about that, right? Ideally, we want to have self-compassion. We want to be able to move forward. We want to focus on the facts, not the fiction. What I mean by that is, you know, let's say you had some cookies, even though you didn't plan to. The fact is you had some cookies. That's it. You had some Mm. cookies, you move on. The fiction is everything else we add to it. The here I go again. I'm never going to get it. Why bother? The I suck. Why? You know, I'm never going to figure this out. Whatever it might be, those that's the fiction we add to it. Um, But it reminds me of like, you know, in the professional world, it's known as a postmortem, right? So whether it's right. a business venture or an initiative or a meeting, whatever it might be, what a postmortem is, is you're going after the event, you're meeting after the event, and you're figuring out and you're talking about what went well, what didn't go well, and how can we improve for next time, right? And that's really the objective here is to not just say, all right, I messed up or you know, which is good in one way, you ha- you want to have that ability to just move forward, but we want to learn from it, right? We want to figure out what went wrong and what we can actually specifically change next time. Because as I like to say, you know, if you focus on results, you're not going to change all that much. If you focus on change, you'll get results. And what we want to do is when we mess up or make mistakes or something doesn't go the way we want it to, we want to learn and figuring out what we can change specifically next time so it goes a different way. Yeah, I love that example of of the business postmortem. I mean, obviously businesses that care about their employees, care about their customers, care about you know their product or service and who are growing in success, this is what they're doing, right? So why not take a page from that in our own personal health journeys and, and figure out how do we apply a postmortem to these mess ups, these mistakes without tanking the whole ship with the story of that mistake. Right. And so I think it's a really great, um, and you know, framework for us to apply here. So let's, let's talk about it. Do you have any examples you want to share? And then maybe we can like break that down with a postmortem. Can you think of any? Sure. I mean, you know, there's been times this year, I mean, now that school is over for my kids, um, and sports are over as well, but there's been times like on the weekends where, you know, I woke up and I didn't have as much time as I wanted to. And I said to myself, all right, you know what? I'll exercise later on in the day. And then okay. later on in the day becomes really late. You know, think this comes up, that comes up. And then I go to sleep and I didn't get my exercise and I didn't get my movement in. And I feel bad about it because I really want to exercise. I feel better when I do. I'm the best version of myself when I do. And what I learned in it, you know, every now and then we need to re- remind ourselves is like, we need to, at least for me, I need to exercise before my excuses wake up. And I need to exercise earlier in the day on the weekend. Otherwise, it's really, really hard for it to happen. So that started with, all right, well, how do I wake up earlier in the weekend? And then it started with, then it went even further. How do I go to sleep earlier on the weekend? Um, Because if I wanted to, and I did want to exercise, I needed to change something. So for me, it wasn't, well, it was just a busy weekend day. I guess I'll get, I'll, I'll get it on Monday when, you know, obviously the weekend's over. It's all right. Well, if I really want to do this and I do, how do I do it? And it was simply about waking up a little earlier, going to sleep a little earlier. And that did the trick. And it was figuring out what it was. And maybe this is overly simple or obvious, but it was a realization that I don't think working out later in the day after a really long day on the fields and courts and going nonstop is I don't think that's realistic for me. And that's A is being honest with myself, but also figuring out what I need to change. Okay. I I mean, maybe it is simple and simplistic, but I don't think it's done enough, to be honest with you. And I think there is a lot of people out there who fear messing up, right? Like I just um, started working with a new client and, you know, we see this a lot. Uh, clients kind of go through a honeymoon phase with us where it just seems like everything is going perfectly. They're doing so well. Something I told this new client, I'm like, okay, um, when are the mess ups coming? <laughs> like, 
I need you to start messing up. So we've got some stuff to work with. And it was a little jarring for her to hear that. And I said, no, I, I want you to mess up. Come on, let's, let's bring it on because we need to start the learning. This is all great. You're doing great with all this. The real learning begins when the mess ups happen. And that's what we want. And I love that you took the time to explain that to us because the things that I heard that were absent, you weren't beating yourself up. You weren't brushing it off and brushing it under the rug, right? And these are the two biggest things that get in the way of us learning from our mess ups. So you really made it matter. And it sounds like you're making progress on those weekend workouts and hopefully feeling better for it. Yeah, for sure. And and I couldn't agree more. I always say like, it's, it's easy when it's easy, but it's not always easy. And when that motivation wave is high, when it, there's that newness of a program, like that's when it's easy. But the real work doesn't mm -hmm. begin until it doesn't feel easy, until that motivation wanes until it doesn't you know feel exciting and fun anymore right that's when the magic happens that's when we can rub our hands together and roll our sleeves up and say all right let's get to work let's figure it out that's the difference i believe or in one of the many differences in our program is like those inevitable slip-ups are going to happen those inevitable wanes are going to happen it's what happens in those moments that make all the difference yes learning is messy so when it feels messy or like you're messing up, let that be a cue. Hey, there's something here for me to learn. Yeah. And if you're with us already, call your coach, get excited. I celebrate when my clients mess up because yay, we're making progress here, right? So, so if it feels messy, it's a cue. Hey, time to learn. This is how I become successful. I do a postmortem. Yes. And, and it's so hard because like I use my, my youngest son as an example. He loves music. He's very musical. He loves the drums. And we, I think I mentioned this once before to you, but, you know, we got him some lessons. And like, you know, he's seven years old. They were very impressed with his work. But then the teacher started giving him more challenging stuff and he couldn't get it. And he was starting to like really get frustrated. And I'm like, buddy, like this is where the learning happens. Like if you're able to do mm -hmm. everything they're asking you to do, then you're not really learning. Like you have to mess up. Messing up is a key to learning. You have to be able to yeah. push yourself through that mess up though. That's, and that's uncomfortable. Um, that's hard, but that's where the magic happens for sure. It is. Yeah. Don't hide from it. Right. I think that's the other thing we see is that, you know, when people are messing up, they hide. Well, we can't do a postmortem if we're hiding. Right. And, and the postmortem leads to growth. progress and success. Yes. Instead of yes. recoiling and hiding, like share. The more you share with us, the mm -hmm. more we can help you. Um, do yep. you have any examples you could share with us? Um, let me think. Well, you know, I have just general ones. I do have one, you know, a client of mine. I worked really hard. She would hit some pretty big potholes. Um, in her journey early on. And we even use that as like a, an analogy. And, you know, we'd kind of chuckle afterwards. Well, we drove the car off the cliff. Okay, well, let's, let's work backwards. Why is that happening? Right? Um, and, and it literally would be like driving the car off the cliff, <laughs> like one bump, and there she goes, this is a little veer right off the road. That's it. <laughs> We'd have to go down and get all the pieces back together. Um, and it was pretty challenging doing some of these postmortems with her along the way. Um, she had to really work to let go of the stories that you were talking about so that she could get out of the way. So we could just look at the facts and say, okay, this is what is happening. This is what is going on. And we can address this. We can change this. And good news is because of our postmortem work, and her willingness to be uncomfortable and open and sharing those times she hits those potholes, she's not driving that car off the cliff anymore. Amazing. It is not happening. Right. Yeah. So it, it really comes from here though, right? Like we had to get this out of the way first and I had to help her be okay with the messing up because then she finally understood like this is my opportunity to learn and do it differently. So yeah. That's fantastic. That's, that's amazing. And that's incredible growth on her part and a willingness to be, you know, vulnerable and say, all right. Yes. Because listen, if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting the same result. And it's important and helpful to ask, like, I need help. This is what's happening. And if you can really, you know, I think for a lot of times it's what we're upset about or the mistakes that are happening, it's a pattern of behavior. 
right? And a pattern mm-hmm. of behavior is, you know, it starts with this, then this happens and this happens. An example might be you put your kids to bed, you sit on the couch, you scroll on the phone, you get hungry, you snack, you mindlessly snack, and then before you know it, it's, you know, 1 a.m. and you're just repeating this pattern. The beautiful part about a pattern of behavior is you can change it often with a very new first action, right? So in that instance, I just shared that whole pattern of behavior started with sitting on the couch, right? And being aware of that, understanding that, talking through that is really helpful, but also understanding that you can actually change that whole entire pattern by sitting, by not sitting on the couch and doing something different. Um, right. But you want to talk with your coach about it because when you do that, it opens up, you know, the dialogue and you can figure out where exactly things are going awry, right? Yes. Yeah. You do kind of have to go through it sometimes with that fine tooth comb, right? And really pare down to like the one or two triggers that set off the domino effect. And that can be useful. But that's probably a whole other uh, video yeah. podcast. <laughs> yeah. But I always like to get specific, you know, because again, or it could be you come home from For work sure. and then, you know, you, you, immediately the bag of chips opens up on the counter. Right. And right. like there's reasons that's happening. Right. And of course, in the moment it feels pleasurable in the moment you're numbing yourself out and the moment you feel like you don't care, um, you just say F it like and, and there. But you can there's things you can do to avoid that. Right. And mm-hmm. the, the main objective of this video or this podcast is to encourage you to talk with your coach about it. Think of through what is going on so you can work through different specific strategies next time. That is where the growth happens. Yep. You got to make your mess ups matter. Make them count. They're going to happen. Embrace it. See it as an opportunity to learn and do it differently next time. And that's how you make progress and eventually succeed. Right. Right. And I, you know, I do that with my boys, like, you know, my kids, it's just like, you know, to me, everything is just a learning opportunity. And it's like, all right, well, this worked. We do more of it. This didn't work. Maybe next time, let's not try that. And it just, it's constant feedback, good feedback, yep. negative feedback, but we want to act on it. Um, cool. I think we got our point across, hopefully. <laughs> I think so as well. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening. As always, we'd love to hear from you. If you have any thoughts or comments or lessons you've learned this week, shoot Adam an email, let him know. We always like to hear from you and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, take good care.